Trump's editors was considering the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, but the majority of House Republicans hesitated. They hesitated to support improvements to make sure all women, minority women, gay women, and students on college campuses would also be protected under the law. My opponent... as well. In fact, he said that he refused to stand up for these added protections because he didn't want to take sides in the matter. Well, we all know what happened in 2012. The people of Missouri knew better and rejected Todd Aiken. In fact, across the country, candidates who did not stand up for women on domestic violence, choice, equal pay for equal work, were soundly defeated. And we need to send the same message next Tuesday. votes in the Republicans. 
In the delegation, there are 10 Republicans and three Democrats. How is that possible? Because too many people didn't vote when all those legislators were elected, you got to redraw the lines. That's right. So the first thing I want to tell you is, all of you who are here, it's a good sign to me. These people will all be elected if you vote. Yeah. And the real choice is not most of what's in the air. The real choice is shaped by one central reality. In 2008, we had a financial crash. It was horrible. It was really horrible for California. You paid a terrible price in education cuts and lots of other things. And you elected Jerry Brown, and I think he took the bull by the horn. Okay, now, in 150 years, there have been four financial crashes in America and many in other rich countries throughout the world. We had them in 1872, 1892, the Depression in 32, and the one in 2008. There was one in Japan in 1990 that wasn't over when I left office. They take on average 10 years to get over. That is, on average, it takes 10 years to get back the jobs you lost when the financial section crashed. And it's not hard to figure. And then think of all the people who lost their homes in California. So banks are scared to lend, people are scared to borrow. Families are scared to spend. Everybody's scared to take a chance. When a business starts doing better, they just try to get everybody to work for them to work harder instead of hiring somebody extra. Everybody goes around on eggshells. It takes a long time. Last month, in six years, America got back all the jobs we lost. I don't expect anybody to be happy because ordinary people don't feel it yet. And because ever since I left office, almost all the gains have gone to people at the top. But when I was there, listen to this. Compared to the only time trickle-down economics ever worked, which was uh, when President Reagan tried it, because we never had, had trickle-down economics before, where you gave all the tax cuts to upper-income people and ran triple the debt and did all that stuff. So it's like we were on an eight-year sugar high. <laughs> it was devastating to President Bush who followed him, and that's why I was elected. Well, let's just take the best they ever did with trickle-down economics. The top 20% of us, when I was president and he was president, both had their incomes increased by more than 20%. Actually, they did a hair better under Reagan, but only because the top 2% did better. The next 20%, 25% better under build the middle class and give poor people a chance to work their way into it, middle out economics. The middle 20% of us did 50% better when I was president. The next 80, the 80th percentile, the fourth 20%, did more than twice as well. And listen to this, the bottom 20%, under Reagan, their incomes went up 7 tenths of 1%. When I was there, 23.6%. We're back. We're like Freddy Krueger in all those movies. We're back. And this election is really about deciding how we're going to go forward. And what's really paying for all those black bag ads is a passionate desire on the other side to go right back to the trickle down economics that got this country in trouble in the first place. We want to raise the minimum wage. We believe in equal pay for equal work. We believe in reforming the college loan program, lower the interest rates, and make it possible for people to pay all their loans back as a percentage of their income so that nobody else can talk about. We believe in investing in your future in science and technology. That's what we believe in. We believe in training people who won't get four-year college degrees for jobs that will be available. So as soon as they get through with the program, they can go right to work. We believe in helping veterans who serve this country. Yeah. Yeah. To be certified with what they did in the military so they can work in the private sector. Yeah. We believe in helping women veterans to overcome the special obstacles they face. Woo. We believe that we're all in this together. Yeah. Yeah. That's what this election is about. So if we vote as if it were a presidential election, then we'll win.
And if we don't, we're in trouble. And your being here shows that. But don't make any mistakes. I don't care what the ads say, that's what the election's about. We're back to ground zero. We got all our jobs back. We're given a chance to now make the future. And the question is, are we going to do it together or not? I work all over the world. And I, and I can tell you that whether it's working with Congressman Dr. Ruiz in the Coach Alley Valley, which we and my foundation has a project that he's been leading, heavily involved in, to improve the health outcomes of the people there, or working with women farmers who farm an acre of land in Malawi with a handheld hoe, where we've increased their incomes an average of 570% per year. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever people work together across the lines that would otherwise divide them, good things happen. Whenever people spend all their time fighting, good things don't happen. Yeah. This is not rocket science. These are jobs. I'm really proud of Mayor Aguilar. I mean, he was hardly old enough to vote, hardly old enough to shave the first time he was elected in the city council. I was reading his biography and I realized he moved to Redlands when I was president. Made me feel ancient. But he worked across party lines and he balanced the budget and he invested in the community and he generated jobs by working together. The thing that impressed me when I started working with Congressman Ruiz, he was not a congressman, he was a doctor. And as you just heard, the son of farm workers, who was living in a county that had the richest and poorest Americans. Living in a place where everybody respected his hard-earned skills. And I noted how he moved easily among the people he went home to help when he could have taken those three Harvard degrees and gone to New York and made a fortune. And he came home to help. And I noted that he was comfortable with the people he came from and not ashamed. And he didn't want to escape, he wanted to embrace. But he was also comfortable with people who could help him achieve those dreams. And so we did something nobody ever done before. We got all these people in that county across party lines and income lines, everybody working together to improve health outcomes because if you can keep people healthier longer, your health care costs will go way down. Yeah. And then, I came here two years ago to campaign for him and to campaign for Julia. And I was impressed that when she got to the Congress, she wanted to work on veterans assignments. She wanted to help women veterans. Yeah. And she took a position on the Congressional Committee that invests in science and technology because technology-related jobs are going to create the opportunities of California's future. Yeah. So I will say again, I don't care what they're running against them. This is a job. And since I can't run for anything anymore, I can tell you something. <laughs> Based on a lifetime of experience. If you live, you reach a certain point in your life, and you realize even if you live to be 100, you've still got more yesterdays than tomorrows. And believe it or not, your tomorrows matter more. I think less about the past today than I did when I was in my 20s. Well, when I was a 20, in my 20s, I wanted to be one of those great Southern novelists, so I was obsessed with every little detail of my past. <laughs> now I think about the only thing that matters in public service. There are only three things that matter. And this is the way they keep score. Are people better off when you quit than when you started? Yeah. Do our children and grandchildren have a brighter future? And are things coming together instead of being torn apart? If you can give the right answer to that, the rest of this is all background music. This is about you and your question. Nobody really thought she could win. And now the Republicans are spending all this money to beat her by confusing you. 
I got to take a minute. They even tried to blame the president for the Ebola outbreak. <laughs> you, you read some of these, listen to some of these news programs, you would think that every third person had it. Here are the facts. One man who came to the United States gravely ill already has passed away. Two nurses who got it because they were courageous enough to treat people have been cured and are Ebola free. One more doctor. One more doctor is still in his period of treatment and in all probability will survive. That's it. Now, I take all this posturing and blaming personally because my foundation works in Liberia. And we had to take our aid workers out of the people that work on AIDS out of the field. But our top four people were asked by the president of Liberia to stay behind and work because they had no health care system. You want to make sure no Ebola comes to America? Fix the health care systems in Liberia, Sierra Leone, and get and help money with them. And the country's been declared Ebola free. You know why? They sent 500 doctors to 19,000 homes in 36 hours. They isolated everybody that had ever had any kind of contact. They held the fort down and they fixed it. This is a fixable problem. But you, if you're interested in it, you got to get everybody working together, and you got to just tune out all that blame placing. I mean, it just hurts my ears. And I got four people there who risked their lives ever since it broken out. And thank God none of them have been infected yet. But it's a metaphor for what this election's about. One side wants you to be all torn up and upset and stop thinking. We want you to think about the fact that we got all our jobs back now, we can create the future. And we ought to do it together with equal opportunity for all. puts on the air, that's what this election is about. That's what the Violence Against Women Act is about. And it happened that I was super sensitive to it because I grew up in a home that had domestic violence. But you shouldn't have to personally experience poverty to want poor people to have a chance to become doctors. Right. Right. city in the Inland Empire to believe that Republicans and Democrats could work together to balance the budget and grow the economy. You shouldn't have to be the first Democrat elected in 70 years in Ventura County to know that there is no partisan difference when it comes to empowering veterans when they come home to make the most of their own lives. I'm grateful I got to go to my fifth reunion. I'm grateful to be a grandfather. I am grateful that my wife and I have had the chance, Haley and I have had an unbelievable chance to live lives that could never have been predicted given our childhoods. And I just want you to do well. And I'm just telling you, working together works, constant conflict's a dead bang loser. Thinking about what you can do to liberate the potential of every human being and helping everybody to do well works. And trickle-down economics is a dead-bang loser. And you've got a few choice. And the only way you lose is if you stay home. Now, they gave me some notes on how this works, so I'm going to read them. Officer, I love you, Bill. Your mail. mail by tomorrow because they got to be in by election day. Otherwise, you can walk your ballot in and drop it off at the polling place or you can just vote on election day. You need to decide how you're going to do this. And then you need to convince other people they ought to do it. The one problem with these rallies, no matter how great they are, is that in the parlance of my native culture, I'm preaching to the saved here. <laughs> But every one of you knows somewhere between 25 and 100 people that you will actually physically see between now and the election who are not here. 
who have exactly the same interest you do in the outcome of the election and who may not vote if you don't personally ask them and tell them what we discussed here today. If you want more affordable college loans, you got to vote for Julie Brown. Anybody tells you. I raised it as governor, I raised it as president, I tried to raise it as twice and the Republicans wouldn't go along with me. And every time I ever tried to raise it, I hear the same thing they're saying now, oh, this would be bad for small business and all this. Let me tell you something. If we raise the minimum wage tomorrow to $20 an hour, everything they, everything they say is right. That is, it would be too much of a jolt to the economic system. Nobody's talking about that. But if you raise it to a reasonable amount, you raise it to a little over $10, it would give up to 40 million Americans a pay raise because a lot of people that rank just above the minimum wage would get a pay raise. And what happens? An enormous percentage of those people are working people with little kids. They've got all they can say grace over to support their children and pay their bills. They will go out and spend all that money. The people who sell them whatever it is they buy will have more money. They'll turn around and order more of that. And the people that fill the orders, they'll be better off. And before you know it, the economy will be growing from the ground up instead of trying to trickle down from the top down. I'm pleading with you. None of this matters that you don't vote. This is your chance. We finally crawled our way out of the hole and we beat a 150 year rule by four full years. We are in the best position of any country on the face of the earth to make the most of the 21st century. It is your life, your future, and you have to go vote for it by voting for these great people. So vote for Julia Browning.